Hello, this is chapter four um, of Mary Chaco, just part one, the sharing. So she starts out, um, and we need to talk about a few features of internet culture that affect how we experience digital um, social media. So the first is remix culture. Um, that's the idea that we should be able to use someone else's content to create new content. So sampling and music is an early form of remix culture, of course, like DJ spinning and, and changing the flow and the sound of music, putting one, you know, mixing one song into another song, that kind of thing. But we do that in social media all the time with like memes or GIFs, like from a famous TV show, and then people put words on it or, you know, use it in their text messages. So we're we're taking culture from that someone else made and using it for our own purposes. So this is remix culture, which of course is just everywhere online. And that relates to the culture of free that the internet, um, when it was being developed, and as you read in chapter two, that it was deliberately kept and different points have been tried to um, kept free and open. So the rise of the internet and um, the way the internet has been designed was to keep it like decentralized. And there's not one point of power where like one corporation owns the internet um, that we tried, to, you know, that people who developed it in at different points, like tried to keep it free. And we kind of have this culture of free where we expect things to be free and that we should be free to use, like to remix and use someone else's image and content. Um, and also that like apps should be free and, and things should be free online. Um, prosumption is the combination of the word producer and consumption into one word. And it it's showing the shift from before um, we would just be passively consuming media, like watching TV, um, buying records and listening to them or CDs or um, watching films. And now, and we are usually doing both. We are looking at other people's content, so we're consuming it, and then we're making our making new content, so we're um, producing. So we are um, creating content, like when we um, make a post online, when we even just do like a heart on TikTok, that data gets fed into TikTok, and then other people will watch that. That video might get boosted on their um, feeds. Also, they can see like how many people have liked it. So the data that we provide then becomes something that someone else consumes. So prosumption is how we are operating online. Other changes just generally in the economy have been the rise of the sharing economy, um, where we don't necessarily all have to own something and use it individually, but we could share something like ride sharing, um, bike sharing, those scooters that you see out, like electric scooters in cities that people just take for a while and then, you know, get back co-working spaces. Um, there are other types of like co-ops where people trade services with each other. Um, so this, some of these are assisted through technology because we can easily find people to share um, things with through technology and digital communities, um, but it has existed before that. The move from paid to unpaid work. So, you know, companies realize that if they can get someone else to do work for them, then they won't have to pay employees. So um, having like self-service kiosks, kiosks and um, like if you've gone into an Amazon Fresh store, you're kind of um, doing a lot of the, you know, you're doing the shopping yourself. Gas stations used to be full service. Now we do it. Even Yelp or like Rate My Professor is, you know, the users of that um, app are like, or that website are providing the content that's valuable then to the website. So, um, you know, with Yelp, they're even doing like when you post your pictures of your food that you liked at a restaurant, then you're giving PR to that restaurant and things that they would have had to pay a marketing firm to like take pretty pictures of their food. Now their customers are doing that for free. The next thing is attention economy. Um, this has several meanings depending, but you know, we can think of it as like a 
um, in the horizontal sense or the vertical sense. And the later part of chapter four with surveillance, she gets into horizontal versus vertical. But I, we can think of the attention economy this way as well, that it refers to all the um, companies that make money off of our attention. So um, famously, I think the, the CEO of Netflix said, you know, our biggest competitor is sleep. So they want people to be on, you know, Netflix all the time and give them all their attention. Um, of course, YouTube, Google websites, they all get money from our attention. So how does that work in two ways? They sell our um, attention to advertisers. Say, look, we have people that are looking, we have eyeballs on the site. And if you put your ad there, they'll see it. So through our, they're monetizing it that way, but also through the data that they collect about us as we move through their um their apps and their sites. Now, the other way we can talk about attention economy is like the way we, it's more of a peer to peer or horizontal where we give, where when you get attention, you get a status and it's, um, and then you kind of have this reciprocity where if you comment on mine, then I'm gonna comment on yours. And there's like this trading of a, con of a status um, through attention. So by getting attention where, and showing our attention where um, giving someone else status. Crowdsourcing is another phenomenon that has risen with the social media and um, internet is um, and related to all these other trends is sharing ideas, services, or content um, by um, getting a large group of people to work on something. So there are things that like go viral that are like challenges, like um, that raise awareness of an issue or raise money for something or just um, spread something like, let's make this the most seen um, tweet, for example. So people kind of collectively in large groups that don't know each other work on something together. Wikipedia is another example. In open coding or open source software like our statistical program, we used to use Moodle as um, our content delivery for uh, teaching, and that was open source. And of course, crowdfunding where people actually raise money like GoFundMe or smaller places like Kiva. And finally, I'll end on social support. This is when people join digital communities that they really gain, it's extremely important the social support they gain from digital communities. This can be um, where you get emotional support, someone, you know, validation, someone understands you, and really practical support too. Like I have spinal cord injury, so I have a group I am a member of with spinal, people with spinal cord injury. And, you know, we just trade like what's the best products to use or what are some clothing that's easy to use. Um, so people get practical information about their condition or living with a disability. There can be like parenting philosophies, like, um, I'm also part of like a, um, a parenting group that talks about um, strategies for dealing with certain behaviors and um, raising kids that are progressive and so on. Um, there are also like buy nothing groups where people that live close to each other, like I'm also in a buy nothing group and we are just like very geographically close to each other. Um, and so this would be a good example. Like, so if I, instead of throwing something away, I would post it there and someone can come pick it up for free. And then, you know, if I'm in search of something, instead of buying something and making waste, right, filling landfills, um, you know, instead of making more pollution and so on, like we, it better just to trade with other people that have things that they don't want anymore. So this is a buy nothing group. And this relates a lot to and supports Chico's finding generally that digital communities and online interaction prompt prompt interaction and prompt face-to-face -face meetings instead of replacing it. So I can, like people in the buy nothing group, you know, they go to each other's houses and they they meet. Um, we see each other, you know, around town. So it prompts and it lets you get to know your neighbors better. They're also like neighborhood watches and um, other types of sites. So I'll end it there and stay tuned for part two of chapter four.